So today we are going to be talking a little bit about the power of words and not just the words that come out of our mouth, but the words that are kind of like tumbling around inside of our head all day. Hello and welcome to the Next Brave Step podcast, the podcast that's all about turning dreams into action. I'm your host, Chelsea Wise. Now, this podcast is more than just something to listen to while you fold laundry. Instead, imagine I'm inviting you to join me in my kitchen, a space for genuine and transformative conversations. Here, with the sunlight streaming through the windows, margaritas, and homemade guac on the table, we're ready to dive into stories and strategies that don't just inspire you to think about a better life, but give you the tools, motivation to go out there and make it happen. So pull up a chair, let's talk like old friends, and together we'll navigate the journey from turning dreaming into doing one brave step at a time. Your adventure towards making your dreams a reality starts right here. And this is something that I started, as soon as I really kind of started getting into like the self-development world, I really started to take notice of the things that were rolling around inside my brain. Um, because when we don't really like pay attention to it, it's easy to like, just think that we don't have a problem. But once you really start to pay attention to the words that are coming out of your mouth and rolling around inside your head, you can see why you have problems in different areas of your life. Um, So the first time that I really took this super seriously was I think when I read the book for the first time, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. And for sure, when I read her second book, You Are a Badass at Making Money. Um, Both of those books were like super like insightful for me anyways on the power of words and the stories that we often tell ourselves that we're like not even paying attention to. So what am I talking about when I'm talking about like the stories that we tell ourselves? And a lot of this really comes down to um, our subconscious. Like what are the things that we picked up in childhood that served us for that season, but maybe don't serve us so well anymore? And for me, they're like, I started kind of getting curious as to what was rolling around inside my head. And I started to see patterns. And I did not like the patterns that I was really starting to see. And the biggest one, like the one that was like the most hurtful was this like old record that would play over and over in my head of you are not enough. You're never going to be enough. And if we talk to other people, like our friends or even our children, the way that we talk to ourselves sometimes, like there's no way we would continue to, anyone would continue to be friends with us. If a friend talked to us the way that we talk to ourselves, like not, not good at all. Um, so once, you know, I started to kind of pick up that this was a pattern of like, you're not good enough. Um, I had, I was determined to like stop that. Um, I did a lot of inner work to figure out like, where did this come from? And that, that was hard. (laughs) I dug real deep into um, past trauma and childhood and all of the things. And it really came down to a lie that I was told once upon a time of this thing happened to you and now you will never be good enough. And doesn't matter what you do now, you're never going to be good enough. That is something that was said to me when I was like in kindergarten, maybe first grade. And it, I internalized it. And now anytime I would come up against something, um, my perfectionism would kick in and nothing, and something didn't go exactly according to plan or someone misunderstood something I had said, or I got in trouble or forgot something like it was, well, there you go. Never going to be good enough. See, it's never going to be good enough. And the trouble with listening to these old beliefs is if those are the records that are playing in your head, you're going to find proof that that is the truth, no matter what. Now, the flip side of that is if we are starting to say things that are really good about ourselves or um, about stuff that we want to accomplish, our brain and our mind is going to make that true, right? So the reverse is true, which is awesome. 
means all we need to do is take out the old record and put in a new one, right? I feel like, I feel super old. Take, I don't know, shut off the playlist and turn on a new playlist really is what it is. There we go, Gen Z. Does that work better for you? <laughs> um, so for me, I know I talked about, I think in an episode last week, 56, maybe 57, where we talked a little bit about the habit loop, um, which if you have not read the book, The Power of Habits, great book. Um, but essentially, it, you can think of the habit loop as a big circle. And at the top of the circle, there is a trigger. So what that's something that's going to trigger a behavior. And the behavior is what it is that you do. And after you do the behavior, you get a reward. Now, you can change any of those three parts in order to change your habit. So for me, I couldn't really change the triggers of like something going wrong in my life as much as I would love to do that um, to stop this like you are not enough playlist from going on in my head. Um, so I started to use the you are not enough as its own trigger. So anytime that I hear my brain tell me, there you go, never going to be good enough. Um, that becomes a trigger for me to be like, no, that is old programming. That is not true. That is a lie that somebody said, and I am good enough. I am worthy of love. I am smart. I can figure stuff out. Those are the things that I start to tell myself anytime I hear my brain say, you're not good enough. Um, and that's hard to do. It is hard to um, break old programming because you have been working on that programming your entire life. And the older you are, the harder it is to break, but it's not impossible to break. Um, so my challenge to you is get curious. Like, what are the things that you're saying to yourself when something goes wrong? Um, another, like, really um, powerful uh, exercise is especially around money. If you are an entrepreneur, um, if you are thinking about starting a business, if you started a business and then stopped your business and then started your business again, yeah, that was me. I've done that before. That's okay. You're in good company. Um, very often, and I've seen this with a lot of my coaching clients, there are limiting beliefs, some old programming about money. And what, what is it that, you, what's your relationship with money? Is it that there's not enough of it in the world? Is it that um, money makes you evil or that money doesn't grow on trees? There are so many stories that we tell ourselves about money. And a lot of times it's stuff that we heard our parents say or our friends say, and it's not, um, it's not our truth but we've picked up these things, right? And I want you to get curious about it. One of the exercises that Jen Sanchero right, like talks about in her You Are a Badass at Making Money is to write a letter to money and explain like your relationship with it. Um, that was, that was eye opening for me to work through that exercise. And um, I'm not going to lie. i I put off doing it for a while. I bet I read that book like three times before I actually sat down and did that exercise. And it, I'm glad that I did. Um, it was very eye-opening and I'm kind of mad that it took me so long to do it. Um, so if you have read that book and you have not done all the exercises in it, this is your sign to go back and do the work. It is not enough just to read. You got to put in the work. Um, just like, you know, affirmations are, are great and manifestation is amazing, but you still have to do the work and you have to take the opportunities that come your way. Otherwise, you're not going to succeed. Um, so one of the other things, another story that I wanted to, I guess, share with you, which is kind of relevant to all of this. It's very relevant to all this. Um, so I, a few weeks ago, had gotten a text message from someone that was kind of like scolding me on doing something wrong, um, that what I did was not done in malicious intent. It was, tr I had 
purely done it in order to be helpful. And um, this person took that uh, to mean something else and really came after me in a very like scarcity mindset type thing. Um, no one was hurt, nothing, everyone was fine. The words that this person texted me were all about their own stuff. And I had a couple different reactions to it. One of it was um, like, I felt like I was in trouble. And that was like my inner child feeling like I was in trouble. Uh, the other part of me was like the grown up version of me was like, hey, what that person said had nothing to do with you. And you're, you're fine. Um, like comforting little Chelsea, but then was also like really pissed off at this person for like spreading all of their limiting beliefs all over everybody. And it also brought to light that this is a person that my kids are around pretty frequently. And as I was talking through this whole thing with my therapist, um, she, you know, we were working through how like there was so many different layers of an emotions behind this interaction and the feelings that I was having. And, you know, she's like, one of your things is like, check in with the kids and see how they're doing because, um, they, yeah, there's to see one of the things is, is that I want to ensure that my kids have self-confidence and that they see the world in through an abundance mindset and not through scarcity. Because if you look at the world through a scarcity mindset, how, you know, everything is out to get you and there's not going to be enough, you set yourself up to live a really small life and limit a lot of the opportunities in your life. And I don't want that for my kids. I want them to live big, bold, beautiful lives that they're proud of and they're excited about. And that means that I have to work twice as hard at instill instilling those things in them since they're not with me every single day. Um, we, I have shared custody with my kids, so I see them for a week at a time. And the other week, they're at their dad's house. And I don't have control over all of the things that are going into their brain. Um, but I do have control over what I put in front of them. And that kind of got me started on um, kind of figuring out like, how can I, you know, help my kids out? And the, the power of all of this is I had that conversation with my therapist the morning before my kids came back for the week. And my, we got in the car and we were driving home and I had broke my Apple watch. The dog had like pulled the leash and the clip on the end of the leash had come up and like popped the corner of it and it just shattered it. And I didn't even know it had shattered. I was driving and for like two hours and looked down like, oh, my hand kind of itches and my arm itches. That's because there was glass all over my arm and inside here. Um, so before we got home, I showed my daughter, I was like, look, I like broke this. And she's like, well, what did you do that for? And that statement was hard to hear come out of her mouth um, because it was, it was words like those that led to the end of my marriage, in all honesty, because I didn't want to be with someone whose first reaction to an accident was, well, what did you do that for? And to hear that come out of my daughter's mouth right after I'd had this conversation with my therapist was like, I need to do something like we need to like, I need to figure out how to combat this. And I thought about it a lot over the next day and a half. And I was actually in the shower and my boyfriend like loves to write little sticky notes to me of encouragement and just different things and stick them on the mirror. And I look out of the shower and I see these sticky notes that have been up there for a while. And I was like, you know, I really appreciate those. Like those just make my day and it feels good to like know that someone is thinking about me and like want something good for me and like 
just made me happy. And I was like, that's what I should do for Skylar. Kind of like little mantras for her on and stuck them on her mirror. And so I've been doing that. And she has really, really enjoyed it. Um, I wrote down a huge list of them the first time um, so that I could, you know, have a list to, to pull from. And that's been awesome to, to really be able to do that for her. And it's just a small thing. Um, it's nothing huge. Um, but I'm really, I'm really glad that I have started doing it. And she... Um, has been kind of rearranging them and um, you know I'll ask her like hey what did you think of it and she like, hmm, it was okay and like she's entering that like preteen like stage where she like doesn't really tell you all of the things that she's thinking um, but she was out with my boyfriend Joel they were uh, running trap lines and he was asking her about it and she's like yeah I really like it it's it's pretty cool it, she uh, wrote that on me there for me um, and the fact that I keep adding to it she has really enjoyed um, so that's something that I would encourage you to do like if you have things that you are finding like these patterns and old records that you're finding yourself like doing write down some mantras that you would want to replace that with stick them on the mirror um, say them to yourself in the mirror that is how you start to create those new records, those new playlists, so that your brain can start to make those things true and find evidence that those things are true out in the world. Um, so in summary of today's episode, this one's a little bit shorter. Um, there is a lot of power in the words that we say to ourselves um, in our brains and out loud. And if you really get curious and start to pay attention to the stories that you're telling yourself, the phrases that come out of your, your brain when, you're, when something doesn't go right or when you're really stressed out or, um, you know, things are not going great, that's the time to really pay attention to what those words are and to start looking at how you can replace those that old programming that no longer serves you. It served you at some point in time, but right now it doesn't. And so how can you replace those with something that is a lot more powerful? Um, that's going to help you, you know, get to where you want to be in life and be happier about it. Um, so recognize the patterns, start working on breaking them and definitely try a daily practice of writing down a mantra and sticking it on a sticky note in the mirror. Um, Skylar has really, really enjoyed those. And we actually sat down that evening and we were talking about something that was like kind of totally unrelated to stuff. She was talking about how she's kind of stressed out about school and um, she doesn't really tend to have a lot of homework, but the way that her teacher does homework is if they don't get stuff done in class, then they can take it home to work on it. But her teacher will grade that stuff a little bit harder because there's no way for her to prove that someone else didn't do it for them. So Skylar tries to get all of her work done in class um, so that she doesn't have to bring it home and so that it doesn't get created harder. And while I understand um, the idea behind it, it was definitely starting to stress Skylar out a little bit. Felt like she was trying to rush through stuff at school. And so I had mentioned to her like, hey, do you think you could just tell your teacher that like you're trying to get it done, but you feel like you're rushing and that you aren't sure if you'll be able to, like, you, you're afraid to take it home, even though, like, technically you're allowed to. And she was like, well, she's just going to say that we're, you know, making up excuses or something like that. And I was like, well, what if you got it all done for the week? And then after you turned it all in, you went up to her and said, hey, this really stressed me out. And I'm worried about not being able to, or not getting graded correctly if I do take it home. Um, and asked her if she felt like she could say that to her teacher. And she was like, no, I don't think so. It's just awkward to talk to people unless they ask me a question. Um, and so I have intentionally put together some mantras and some little notes for her that are talking directly about using her voice and that her opinion matters and that even though she's 
young and she's small, like her voice is still big and her voice is still needs to be heard. And so those are some of the things that I have been um, writing on her notes. So if you listen, if you watch my Instagram stories, those notes tend to pop up on there every once in a while. Um, so that is it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I want you to, I want to leave you with this question and that is what words are shaping your life today and how can you transform them to craft the life of your dreams? All right. It's a great question. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, We are looking to bring on some guests to the episode soon. So if you would like to nominate someone to be a guest on the show, or if you would like to be a guest on the show, you can go down to the show notes below and there will be some information on how to apply to be on the episode or on the podcast or how you can nominate someone to be on the podcast. All right, guys, that is it for today. I will see you in the next episode. Bye. That wraps up today's episode of The Next Brave Step. I've truly enjoyed having you join me on this journey. Here at The Next Brave Step, we don't just talk about our dreams. We take bold actions towards them every day. Stay connected by hitting